Hello, welcome to the Hawthorne Cottage Craft Podcast, episode 25. Today is Sunday the 24th of June 2018. I'm Kate. You can find me on Instagram as Kate underscore Hawthorne Cottage Craft, on Ravelry as a runner bean, and we have a Ravelry group for the podcast called the Hawthorne Cottage Craft, all one word, podcast group. There you'll find show notes for the episodes, there's an introductions thread if you'd like to come and introduce yourselves, and there are other threads there for giveaways, and uh, there's a questions and answers thread there at the moment if you have any questions you'd like to ask me, and I'll answer those at a future date. Welcome if you're a new viewer, it is lovely to see you, and welcome back if you're a returning viewer, it's lovely to have you back. If you like what you see, uh, please feel free to subscribe and hit the thumbs up button. It's lovely to get the podcast out there to other people so that they can join our community as well. I hope you have your cuppa ready for some knitting this morning. It's still quite early here and I thought I would get it in before the heat rises. Um, we're actually having beautiful weather here in Ireland at the moment. Um, summer has been a bit longer than usual it's lasted more than a day and we're all thrilled so I wanted to get this podcast in this morning before the we can go out and do things and enjoy the, the summer sunshine. Although it has been a month since I last spoke to you I have no finished objects today normally within that time I have one or two but there's nothing today the weather has been beautiful here and we've been taking advantage of it and been outside and going to the coast and enjoying ourselves. But I have got some knitting done and although all the projects have had a little bit of work done, one in particular has had quite a lot. I have worked almost exclusively, almost exclusively on one. The last time I spoke to you, I told you that I had been really privileged to be included in the beta knitting team for the Fibre Company's new autumn collection um, called Borrow Deal. This collection of patterns is based on accessories and garments and I had the chance to choose uh, one of the garments to knit for them and the garment that I have chosen is a sweater called Blee Rock by Becky Baker and this has been a beautiful knit for me. It's a bit of a departure, I'm knitting in pieces and I haven't knit a sweater in pieces flat for quite a long time, like a lot of people, I think maybe that was the way we were introduced to garment knitting when we were younger. Um, but it's been a long time and I've really enjoyed it. I'm looking forward actually to seeing how this uh, joins together because there is an argument that seam sweaters are much stronger than a, a, a garment knitting around. There's less twist. Um, particularly when a garment is worn, maybe washed, there can be a little bit of twist when there's there's no seam there to structure it. So it'll be interesting to see how this works out. Uh, I have all my pieces knit and I am ready. I have them washed, I have them blocked. This yarn has blocked beautifully and I'm ready to seam it and then work on the neckline that it calls for. The yarn is also from their new collection and it is their lower collection and it's 100% Romney lamb's wool and it is beautiful. I will show you a little bit. I can't show you too much of the project yet before it's released, but I'll show you a little bit. There is a smocking stitch pattern within this sweater and the stitch definition of the lower is beautiful. The colourway that I'm working in is calm, beautiful shade of blue and the stitch definition is beautiful. It's coming up really really well. It is very very soft. Now I'm not sure how uh, next to skin it will be. I don't think it would bother me. Um, it is designed to be a, a layering piece anyway and I think Certainly with a long sleeve top underneath this, there should be no issue. I I like this um, feel of yarn. I love the halo. There's a little bit of halo. And I think I, I probably could wear this next to skin, but I know there may be some people who wouldn't. But as I said, it'll be a good layering piece. 
this will be coming out in the autumn as I said maybe September October I am hoping that this will be one of my Rhinebeck sweaters but keep an eye out for it there are um, a few hashtags and I'll put those along here that you can go and look at some of the other um, people who are knitting for the collection and see little snippets of what they're coming up with um, some of the pieces are beautiful the yarn colors are gorgeous um, I saw them and was able to, to choose mine and it was quite difficult to choose because there are so many beautiful colors but I keep a wee eye out for this as I said I'm interested to see now how it um, joins together and I'm looking forward to seeing the finished piece and hopefully within the next week this garment will be finished um, and I can show it to you then in a few months time when the pattern is eventually released but I've been working almost exclusively on that as I said but I have worked on a few other projects as well the last time we spoke I was getting ready to go to the Woolen Festival of Yarn in Dublin at the end of May and I'll tell you all about that later but when I was traveling I had hoped to work on my little twig sweater that you have seen in past episodes the little twig sweater is by Melody Hoffman who is mandarins and I'll insert a photograph of the pattern here. And when I spoke to you I had got the body of the sweater to the underarm finished. This was the stage I was at. Um, it's rib and then just plain knitting and there's no shaping here at all it's just stocking up and around and I was knitting this on my Lika needles and uh, it's a five millimeter which is a US 8 and this is where I got to I think maybe I had cast on the sleeve and had been working the rib I think I had and I got that done and had hoped to knit in the car. Didn't do that. But in the last couple of days I picked it up again and sure enough it was such a quick knit that I have one sleeve done and I have the rib of the second sleeve done. The yarn that I'm using is Durerum Natura Agiliat Durerum Natura and it's a worsted weight yarn and it's a foray colourway that I'm working in and it has worked up as I said incredibly quickly the thing that I was telling you about the last time that I was going to try out were a new set of needles and I wasn't sure what I would feel about them I can tell you now that I love them I think they're fabulous these are Chayagu needles And they are the 12 inch needle I wanted something you know my history with sleeve knitting knitting magic loop leaves on occasions a ladder up the side of the sleeve where it would join um, which I don't like and I have used double pointed needles which have worked better but I have always felt that if I could knit in the round um, a sleeve it would work so much better for me I have tried nine inch needles for socks and really really don't like them um, I find just my hands get sore uh, holding them I don't have particularly big hands but even just that small cable doesn't work well the 12 inch uh, needle works so much better there's a little element of that but it's it's nowhere it, it's much more comfortable to work than the nine inch needle and it has worked so well my sleeve does not have any laddering at all and it's very very quick to work it literally is just knitting round and round and round so if you're having trouble with sleeves um, and with laddering I, I definitely would recommend the 12 inch needle it has been a real pleasure to work with and I'm hoping that within the next couple of days I'll get this sleeve knit and then I'll be able to join it to the body of the sweater the sleeves and the body join here and then there's a, the pattern 
appears in the yoke and it's really the feature of the sweater and I'm looking forward to getting to that it this sweater because of the blue rock for for the fiber company has taken a back seat and it took a back seat because I'd done the test knit of uh, my Parisian dream sweater so I really really would like to get this I'd obviously not be wearing it at the moment but it's a sweater I would really like to see off the needles the Durerum, the Gilead Durerum has been a beautiful yarn to work with and as I've said before in previous episodes it's a really good alternative to Brooklyn Tweed. Um, the Brooklyn Tweed's beautiful but it's certainly a higher price point and this one is um, much more affordable now. I was very lucky I got this yarn gifted to me um, for Christmas but in saying that it is still a much better price point than the Brooklyn Tweed. Beautiful, beautiful project and really looking forward to getting that one off the needles. But I've also worked at Socks. I had cast these on, I think, or was just about to cast them on. I can't actually remember whether I've been cast on or not. But these socks are Felici socks. Um, I had decided to stash dive and I love Felici socks. I find them quite hard wearing. I know they're a lot of people don't like it, they feel it's too soft, but I wanted to, I'm trying to use up stash, I, I'm also trying to, to use up all my super wash, it'll take a long time, but I do want to use it up, I don't want to waste it, you know that I've really gone over towards my natural yarns and I'm looking for natural sock yarns as well, but I have a lot of super wash um, sock yarn in my stash and I don't want to waste it. I will use it. It it wears well, um, and I I like the Felici. I like the colours of the Felici. I do find it quite hard wearing. Any socks that I've knit in it before are still very much on the on the go, and there's there's no issue with them. But I have the Lost Lakes colourway. I decided to knit both socks concurrently so that um, I don't have second sock syndrome. And I've been using my Knit Pro Zings and they are certainly my DPN of choice for socks. I'm in a DPN kick at the moment. I have Knit Magic Loop for socks and I have a pair of socks lined up that I'm going to put on once these are finished. Um, there'll be a little bit of travelling done in July and I want... I like Magic Loop when I'm travelling because I don't have the worry of needles falling. Um, all over the place and having to scramble to get them and I'm looking forward to putting those on but I really do like the DPNs I seem to knit a lot quicker on them and I'm at this stage with both socks I have my line in for my afterthought heel I had told you the last time that I, I must have had these on actually the needles I told you that I was hoping to try a different heel with these socks rather than the afterthought heel to experiment a bit but being the impatient person that I am I got towards the heel and just thought no I just want to keep cracking on with these and I put in the line for the afterthought heel and I'll go back and do those but it's a slip stitch pattern and my I think it's 15 or 20 row I think it's a 20 row um cuff it doesn't it, I can't really count the rows in the cuff for these because I, I work with the stripe I go with the color change uh, when I'm doing self striping but it's in and around 20 rows 64 stitches as per usual 2.5 millimeter one and a half US needle that very seldom changes in my socks and as I said, I have the heel in and I'm working down the foot in both. I really do like doing it this way. It makes it feel speedy. I'm sure it's not any faster, but psychologically it, it feels speedier. And I'm really, really pleased with those. Those have been worked on quite a lot. Sock knitting, as per usual, is very often my car knitting. So I've been working away on those socks and... The afterthought heel I'd better put in there is uh, from Laura Linneman, who's one of the knit girls, and I'll link that in the show notes for anybody who wants to see her pattern. It's the afterthought heel socks pattern, 
and she explains how to do the afterthought heel within that and there's a video link within the pattern for a YouTube video that they have created to show you how to do it. Um, I want to announce a giveaway here actually in the middle of this for a sock pattern. I have had a couple of sock patterns very kindly donated to the, the podcast and I'll, I'll stagger them out. But today I want to give away a sock pattern that has been donated by Yarnia Designs. Hannah is Yarnia Designs on Instagram and she has the Tales of Yarnia podcast. And she donated her Cottage Gardens socks pattern to the podcast. And there will be a thread in the podcast group that I will open up for this. What I would like you to do, make sure you are a subscriber and a member of the group and in the giveaway thread just tell me what your go-to knitting project is certainly within the car when I'm car going out in the car or going out somewhere sock knitting is my go-to because it's so portable I always carry socks with me they're in a bag to grab they either stay in the car or they go into my handbag if I'm in the house my go-to project is always a sweater it, I will always lift a sweater before I lift anything else. Sometimes I have to actually tell myself to put some, you know, put the sweater down and knit in something else. But certainly at home, a go-to project is a sweater. If I'm out and about, the go-to is a sock. What's yours? Tell me in the thread for the giveaway. I will draw using random number generator on the next podcast. It's a beautiful pattern. I'll insert a photograph of the pattern here. So hop over to the thread to be in with a chance to win that beautiful pattern. And thank you again, Hannah, for donating it to the podcast. So there have been a couple of sweaters and socks. And I do have a shawl on the needles as well, as you know. Now, this was part of the... It was an M cal. It was a mystery cal by um, Curious Handmaid, who is... Helen Stewart and it was her impressionist's cal. The cal is long over. Um, all the clues have been released. Many people have finished this. This is a slow knit for me. It's one sometimes I knit on. It's a welcome relief from sweater knitting occasionally. Um, I'll pick it up and do a few rows and just keep it progressing like that. I'm really enjoying it. I'm still on clue too although I'm almost finished it. I'm about three quarters of the way right through clue two and I know three and four are shorter clues but longer rows. Um, so I do feel as though I'm progressing. I would like, I was going to say I would like to have this finished by the end of the month. That's next week. That's not going to happen. I have a cast on for a shawl that I want to do on the 1st of July. It's Canada Day and I know a few of the Canadian podcasts have knit alongs for Canada Day and I have some Canadian yarn that I'd like to put on but I had wanted to have this one finished first that's not likely to happen next week there may be two shawls on the needles but this is as I said a slow knit I'm not rushing it I want to enjoy it and we'll just see how it progresses anyway a lot of waffle I am knitting the <laughs> Impressionist shawl by Helen Stewart and this is my progress so far. I have a lot of stitch markers. I'm at the stage where there's a lace section. And my shawl has actually almost become a fade. It's the only fade I've ever done. But I'm really pleased with it. You can't you're just starting to see the lace pattern come through. There's a little bit of um, you can't really see it. Maybe you can. Lace there. There's a little bit more intricate lace design here. But it's a very, very simple pattern to follow. And I, I am really, really enjoying this. I'm starting to, to build up the stitch count. I'm knitting this on my Knit Pro Zings. Um, they're 4mm, which is a US 6. And they're perfect needle for this project. A little bit blood tipped at the lacy bit but not too bad and actually it, they stay on the needles. 
they, they slide off the needles easily enough but they stay in the needles as well whereas sometimes another metal needle it slides off too quickly um, and I don't like wooden needles for lace work so these are a perfect combination I think for a project like this the yarn that I'm using um, I am the first section this is vintage fine fish yarns it was one of the first colorways it is the first colorway I ever bought although not the first skein of it because I kept giving it away um, as presents because it was so beautiful and I had to keep buying it this is Queen Maeve and it is um, 80 20 yep super wash merino nylon and I love the pops of pink so that's fine fish yarns the second color which is the color I'm working with at the moment and this is life in the long grass and the colorway is called treasure again this is deep stash and it's 75 25 superwash merino nylon and that's what I'm working this lace section with and the final color is ginger twist studios and it's lollybrock and it is set 80 20 but it's superwash bfl blue face leicester and nylon and i'm looking forward to getting more of this in so far the third color has just appeared a little bit it's striped in here oops I'll show you the right side would be better it's striped in here but I'm looking forward to seeing a larger section of this. So those are my three colorways. It is progressing slowly, but as I said, sometimes it's just nice to have something that's a little bit different um, when I'm working so much on sweaters, um, just to pick it up. And it's, it's a, a rhythmic, slow knit, which sometimes is just really, really nice um, to have, to, to take that time out to work on. So it's getting there. I'm looking forward to getting to the third clue and seeing how it, it knits up and progresses. Any photographs, if, I think if you put in the hashtag impressionist um, shawl cal, I think it is, um, you'll see lots of finished objects there and you'll see what the shawl looks like. It is a beautiful shawl as are all Helen's patterns. So that's everything I have been working on. Which actually is quite a lot, really, when I think about it. It's maybe, I thought I hadn't as much on, but I, I do have quite a lot that I've been working on, just in, in small bits and pieces. Hopefully the next time I see you then, I will have some more finished objects to show you. Hopefully there'll be socks off the needles. Maybe the little twigs. We'll have to wait and see. Um, I can almost guarantee there will be project on the needles new. Um, I have a few lined up that I'm hoping to work on. I have my next pair of socks, I have the yarn chosen, I have a hat that I'm hoping to knit. Um, I just haven't chosen a pattern of the wool pulled out. Um, I'm trying to use some of the, the yarn I got last year at Rhinebeck and I have yarn pulled for that just so I have a nice small project after the sweaters. A set of socks pulled that I can work on and I have a shawl that I'm hoping to get on the needles and I've sweater ideas just bouncing in my head that I want to work on again with some of the stashed yarn. If you saw on Instagram, um, over the past few weeks I've been gifted some beautiful yarn from different people and I have a sweater's worth of new um, let lope that I'm, I'm thinking about. I'm going to let that one brew for a little while because I really want the right project for that and I haven't chosen if if you're on instagram please find the post there where i put up the picture of the yarn and if you have any ideas for a let lopey sweater there have been lots of ideas given already please feel free to give me some ideas i'm going to look at them all and try and make a decision at some point but i have other projects that are um to the forefront of my head that i would like to get on the needles with yarn that's well it's it's over on the wall over here that I'm, I'm looking forward to getting on. So probably the next time there will be new projects on the needles as well. Um, but since I last was here 
as I said earlier, I was at Woolen. Woolen was Dublin's festival of yarn, Ireland's first big indie dyed yarn festival, and it's the last weekend in May. So it's what three? It is a month ago. It's four weeks ago. Um, it was amazing. It was really fabulous weekend. I had intended going on. What well, my my full intention was to be there on the Saturday. I had booked um, the Kate Davies talk um, and that had been my intention. I knew there were a lot of people there coming on the Saturday that were only going to be there on the Saturday that I really wanted to see and meet up with. I got the opportunity to go on the Friday as well and I took that and I am really, really pleased now that I did. I was there all day on the Friday um, but due to family circumstances when I got home I wasn't actually able to go back on the Saturday and I missed the talk and I missed seeing people and I was hugely disappointed about that um, and seeing all the, the photographs on Instagram. Um, I was really sad that I wasn't there but it was just circumstances beyond my control I couldn't get back. So I was really glad that I had decided at the last minute to go on the Saturday, on the Friday as well. I was very privileged to be part of the press team as they called it. I had my press pass. I felt very official with my press pass. Nadia from the Cottage Notebook um, podcast. If you ha She's an audio podcast. If you haven't listened to Nadia, you really should go and listen to her podcast. It is the most relaxing, informative um, podcast to listen to. Um, but Nadia organised this. She's an Irish um, podcaster. Um, and organised the press team for that and did a lot of work for Woolen. So I was I was really privileged to be part of that. It meant that I got into the, the festival a little earlier and I got some photographs. I got lots of photographs. I had intended on the Saturday to take some more, um, which obviously didn't happen. So I'll insert all the photographs that I took at the festival at the end of the podcast as usual. I had a wonderful time. The range of vendors who were there was great. Um, this was the first event. Um, and I, I am sure vendors are a little nervous of new festivals. Will it be worth their while? Um, particularly if they're coming from further afield. It was a great success. And I think all the vendors there really enjoyed being part of it. There were vendors from far and wide. But it was lovely to see so many Irish vendors taking um, part and being given space to show their work. I'm sure with more established festivals sometimes it can be quite hard to get into if, if there are vendors who come regularly. So it was lovely to see Irish vendors getting a space to show their work. And we had lots. Uh, S-Twist was there. Um, I'm, I'm going to miss out some and I, I really don't mean to. Yo Mama, Fine Fish Yarns, um, Dye Candy, uh, Babbles Yarns was there. Um, Ellie and Ada, Green Elephant, Dublin Dye. So many local um, Getty Ant Yarns. I'm, I'm really pleased to not be offended if I miss anybody out. There, were, there was a huge list of vendors there. And it was great to see them. And everybody has such a different aesthetic. So there was something there for everybody. Um, I don't think anybody could have said that, that their taste was left out. Uh, there were lots of classes that went on. I didn't take part in any classes. I didn't get to my talk. Um, but there were lots of classes. And it was great, great, um, great to see so many well-known, internationally acclaimed, teachers there um again i'm not going to list them because I'll, I'll get them all wrong but justina lakowska was there um nathan taylor sock Matician, was there to name two out of a great list um of teachers and i think everybody who went to the classes really really enjoyed them and whoever went to the kate davies talk really loved it <laughs> do you think i'm bitter do you think i'm sad Probably. Um, no, I was, I'm really pleased that people got to see those and got to take part in those here. Um, Kate O'Sullivan, who is a playful day on all online platforms, 
um, was there taking photographs. You had the opportunity just to go up and get your photograph taken. It was all about making you feel better about yourself. I don't actually like, although I do this, I don't like getting my photograph taken. Um, I felt, you, f you know, I feel uncomfortable getting my photograph taken. She made everybody feel so at ease and the photographs are all on the Willen website. Um, I'll put a link to that uh, where you can go and see um, her work for the day. She took um, the photographs of those who were there just at, to see the show and be part of the show. She took people, um, photographs of the vendors. It was just a wonderful, wonderful event that really got, um, I think, a lot of people's... Um, People's spirits were high over the weekend and there were a lot of happy faces to be seen and Kate was able to uh, take a record of that with her photographs. So go over to the, the Will and website for that. I got some stash, which I will show you. It was very, very good, I think. Um, I just have to step across. I will be back in one second. And everything falls. I realised I'd forgotten a bit of my stash. Everything is falling around me. Please excuse the noise. Um, when I got there, being part of the press team, I had a little goodie bag. And I have everything stashed in the goodie bag. From the festival. So this is the woolen tote bag. And part of the, the goodie bag, I got one of their enamel pins. I think their pins are beautiful. So that was the woolen pin. I can actually get these all unpacked now. And two of the sponsors for woolen, there were different sponsors which are listed on the bag. This is knit. Oh, it's on that side. This is knit the yarn shop in the centre of Dublin in the Powers Court Centre. Sponsored it and knitting tours, um, which are knitting holidays based in Ireland um, sponsored it as well but also the Fibre Company and Studio Donegal sponsored it oh the skein's coming apart so this was the Studio Donegal that I got and I can see this been a lovely autumn hat um, it is their 100% merino wool um, dyed and spun in Kilcar in County Donegal. I am hoping to visit Studio Donegal this summer. It's quite close to my parents' house and um, I'd like maybe to visit there. And if I do, I'll take you with me. But this is beautiful, beautiful, soft Donegal. And this yarn, I've knit with this before. I knit my, um, oh, My sweater from Lan Magazine, Lina Magazine, the very first one. I can't remember the name of it. I'll link it. Um, I knit it in Studio Donegal, um, one of their yarns, and once it's washed and blocked, it really, really softens and it's beautiful. So I'm looking forward to knitting with that. And the fibre company had also put in some of their Acadia. Now is that not my colour? And this is, oh, this feels so soft. This is 60% merino, 20% baby alpaca and 20% silk. And it's a double knit. And the colour is driftwood. And that is just beautiful. I really don't know what I'm going to do with this. Maybe have to buy some more of it and think of a project. So they, that was... I was very, very privileged to get that in the goodie bag from the sponsors. But purchases, what did I buy? I mainly, I bought some yarn, surprisingly. Um, I got some sweaters worth of this. This is Jameson's. Um, Isolde had... Uh, a stand she was vending at the at the show so I got some of the Jamesons and I got I purchased her pattern to knit this 
um, baseball tee. I really like the simplicity of that. Be a lovely casual top. And this is this will be the sleeves and the body. So I bought a sweater's worth of that. And I bought let's fall into the bottom now. Bear and Sheep's Clothing, um, another uh, local to me, Indy Dyer, who you've seen on this podcast before. She was, she and Derek were vending and um, I bought one of their logo badges. I think her logo is just the cutest. Bear and a sweater. So I have uh, her enamel pin. And another yarn that I got, now this was a swap. Um, Grace and I were at Atlantic Knitscape together a few months ago it was the beginning of May and Grace from Babbles Yarns we did a swap she got a bag and I got this and she brought it with her to Woolen so this was part of a swap and this is her on the turn colorway and look at those colors so this will be a pair of socks eventually so that was the yarn that I got that wasn't too bad. I think I was quite restrained in the old yarny section. Maybe it was a good job I wasn't there a second day and I would have been tempted. But I also got bags. Um, my friend Kira, who is Emerald Fibres, um, was vending for the first time at Woolen. And you know I love her bags. I have three or four of them. I have one in use. It's at the other side of the room again. But she has brought out a new range of bags and I couldn't resist. Now, she gave me one as a gift, um, just for full <laughs> disclosure. But I bought one and she has this beautiful little sock bag. It's like a, a lunch pail. With leather straps. And I will now be able to use it. I didn't want to use it yet till you saw it. So it closes over and you have a little lunch pail for your sock knitting on the go. So this will be my on the go bag and it's made from canvas. This is her label. It's made from a beautiful robust canvas so this will be so hard wearing. And her bags are just so well sewn. Um, the other bag I got, I have a colour theme going on, is this one. Isn't this gorgeous? It's a duffel bag. Kind of the bag of my youth. With a leather base and canvas, really strong canvas. And it is meant to be used as a knitting bag, but it has actually become my handbag and there are pockets in it my wallet's in it but there are pockets that you could put your patterns in I can't really show it very well turn it down to get the wallet out it would be easier so there are pockets that if you wanted to put your patterns down into you can but I actually use this as my handbag and still put my netting in it but I use this all the time it is so hard wearing this has got a lot of use actually since since woolen. So if you're looking for some of Emerald Fibres bags, I would strongly urge you to go and look um, for her updates. I will link everybody that um, I have shown you within the show notes so that you can see them. But that, I'll get my notes, sorry, for the cl extreme close-up. That was my stash for woolen. Um... As I said, it was a fabulous event. I cannot thank the Woolen organisers, the Woolen team enough for the the event that they've put on. I think everybody thoroughly enjoyed it. I've, I don't think I've heard any negative comments about it at all. People travelled from far and wide to attend. If you're interested in going, the dates have been released for next year. Pencil it into your diaries. Check your flights. Check out uh, a weekend or a week in Dublin. Um, it's the 14th and 15th of June 2019 is the next event and it really is worth coming to. It's a friendly, relaxed um, event. Um, so I can't, I can't recommend it highly enough.
But there's a few upcoming events uh, within the next month or two that I want to tell you about as well, just to finish off. Yarn Folk Festival of Wool um, is coming back in August. They had their first festival last year. It's the most local to me. It's in Whitehead in County Antrim. Um, it's along the coast. It's a beautiful venue. Um, it was a great success last year and um, they're running it again this year. It's on Saturday the 4th of August and again I link their website. They're, they're getting their website up and running at the moment. They have an Instagram page as well um, and I'll, I'll give you the link for that. Go and check it out. There's a range of workshops. I don't think they're all booked up yet. Um, if you want to go and see what they have. The list of vendors is growing. Um, there's a wide range again. Um, go and see that. Uh, John Arbin's coming. Um, the local dyers, Bear and Sheep's Clothing, uh, Yo Mama, uh, I think, is coming. Um, I haven't actually checked the vendor list in a while, but go and check it out on the website and you'll see there who's, who are all is going to be there. It will be worth it. It is another friendly event. It's run at the same time as a food festival within Whitehead, so there's something for the men um, to go off and do, or the significant others who don't want to be part of the Wool Festival. There's plenty to do in Whitehead. Uh, it's a small town, but it's a very, very beautiful town um, along the coastline, so it is worth a visit. I am going to give you an exclusive reveal. Behind me, I have the exclusive Yarn Folk colorway by Skin Queen. Skin Queen, I think she she vended last year. I don't know if she's actually coming this year, but her yarn will be there. Um, she's sending yarn. Um, she herself can't be there, but she has created an exclusive colorway that um, I think will be available in Lighthouse Yarns and Whitehead on the day. It's this. There is a row of houses in Whitehead on the promenade and I don't know if you are familiar with the children's uh, television programme I don't even know if it runs anymore but it was on here on the BBC when my children were small called Balamori and it's set in Scotland but there's all the houses are very very brightly coloured and we have our own Balamori in Whitehead there's the row of houses along the promenade are all brightly coloured, all a different colour and they really stand out, they're beautiful. So this is coloured houses based on that and this is a 70% superwash merino, 30% silk fingering single and it's white heads on the mouth of Belfast Loch and this is Storm on the Loch. So this is the exclusive colourways for Yarn Folk. Will only be available there. So if you want to get your hands on it, come to the festival. So that's a little sneak peek of the new colourways. So that's the 4th of August and I'll be there and I hope to see you there as well. If you haven't been before, please think about coming. Another festival that I want to tell you about that I don't actually have an awful lot of information about, um, but... I'll let you know about it anyway, is the Spinning Yarns Festival. And this again is local to me. It I don't it might be in its second year, I'm not sure. I hadn't actually heard of it before, and they've kept a quite low profile, and I don't know why, but I think it will be a, a, another great event. It's the first and second of September. Uh again, it's the Spinning Yarns Festival, and it's an Antrim Castle Gardens. Um the local council, um, my local council is running this and I will give you the website. I have no more information than what is on the website but I will, I will link it here. They have said that they're celebrating and I quote every aspect of the wool and linen journey. Northern Ireland is known for its linen production um, historically. Um, unfortunately not anymore. Um, Northern Ireland was a huge producer of linen and um, there's a linen mill, a former linen mill about a mile from me here. I grew up in a linen growing and linen producing area. Belfast was known for its linen industry. So 
linen has been celebrated at this festival, but also wool. They're taking it from basically from sheep to to garment. There will be workshops. There will be demos. There will be a marketplace. Um, they haven't released the vendor list yet. Um, I think actually you can still apply to be a vendor at it. And there will be craft stalls. Any information I get, I let you know. But basically, go and look at at their website, and you will see the information that I have. And it's the Spinning Yarns Festival dot com, and it's in Antrim Castle Gardens um, on the first and second of September. So that's a few things over the summer that will keep us going. Um, I hope you all have lovely summer plans. Um, we have a little holiday. We have an 18th birthday to celebrate in the house and we have a, a little trip and I'll probably take you on the trip. I don't want to reveal anything more about it yet, um, but you'll see when we're there what we're doing and I will be bringing my knitting and knitting when I'm away. Um, it's just for a few days, but it'll be, it's, we're all very excited about it. So there's that, but I'm sure everybody has their summer plans. Winter, if you're snuggling up in the Southern Hemisphere, um, we're just glad to get a little bit of heat. It's lovely. Um, the next school's out at the end of this week. Um, we have one more week. And then no more packed lunches for two months. Yay! Um, and we're looking forward to that and just pottering about over the summer and, and enjoying ourselves with a few things kind of within our own, I don't know about you, but uh, we don't explore our own locale enough, I think, because it's so familiar. Everybody else comes here and talks and gets excited about the beautiful things that are in Northern Ireland and Ireland. And we don't see them because they're local to us. Do you do that in your local area? You don't see the tourist things. So maybe we'll do play tourist at home quite a lot over this summer, if the weather permits it. So that's kind of how the summer's going to pan out. I hope to be back here uh, within the next few weeks. You know me, it nearly always works out to be about a month. I will try and get in a bit sooner. I do have the questions and answers um, thread. I do want to record a mini episode of that. So please feel free to put in more questions to that. Um, I reserve the right to answer anything. Not answer anything that's too personal, but really anything goes. I will answer what I can and I, I want to keep them all to that one little episode um, so if you have any more questions please put them in there so that I've, I've, I've stuff to talk about um, but that's that's how the summer is going to pan out I hope you have a lovely few weeks and enjoy your knitting and please feel free to stay on and enjoy the photographs of woolen and maybe other little bits and pieces of the last few weeks that I can include there and again if you've enjoyed what you've seen and haven't already subscribed, please feel free to subscribe and give the video a thumbs up and put it out there a wee bit more. So thank you again and I shall see you soon.